Hey guys, welcome to Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews. I am your host, Boise, and this is Raw Review. Let's be honest, we all know the big news about Roman Reigns. Uh, we will talk about that in the review, but before we get started, we just want to put our thoughts and prayers to Roman Reigns. Thank you, Roman. Or, oh, let's be honest, thank you, Joe. You know. Um, and let's just get straight on with a review. Just play the music. So we kicked off the show with Roman Reigns and Roman relinquished the Universal title. Now this has been this has been splattered everywhere from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, BBC News over here, Sky News over here, Sky Sports News. It was it's lit it was literally everywhere was this news. Um Roman had to really crush the belt because he's uh, been diagnosed with leukemia and this is the second time it's it's affected him and you know first time he managed to be it obviously we're all wishing and hoping he's able to to defeat this terrible terrible disease because end of the day um, no matter what you think of the character what you think of how he's been booked um, he's still a person he has a wife he has kids he has a family and you know it, it affects him I, I had family members who who died because of this and I you know I, I obviously have my own thoughts on it but right now I want to show my support for Roman so Roman thank you you know you were you were a leader in the locker room and you were a leader in the ring no matter what anyone says about you bro you were awesome so from everyone here from uh, Yasha to me to Mr. J we just want to send out our thoughts and prayers to you Roman um, obviously, it was a touching, set, you know, touching and sobering part of the show straight away. But it just everything which happened, you know, happened. It 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 knocked everyone from the start, and it's just, you know, I can't. What more can we say? So thank you, Roman. Next up, we had Bobby Lashley versus Finn Balor. Um, what can I really say? This was a really weird match. I felt like it's definitely the start of a feud. It's definitely building up for probably till Survivor Series, maybe on that. Um, just it was just an odd match. I it makes sense. Bobby Lashley is you know becoming one of the more dominant heels on the show, and Finn is a recognised babyface, one of the bigger babyfaces on the on the Raw roster so these two colliding just makes sense but it just felt like in the nicest possible way Finn won the match really look at, luckily uh, with a small package uh, Bobby Lasher was so overconfident with uh, Leo, Leo Rush chanting his name thinking he's over you know his muscly oversized strength would defeat someone like Finn Balor whose technical skills are Let's be honest, superior to what Bobby Lashley has in the ring. So it just felt like, the, uh, is this the type of feud we're going to get where Lashley's going to dominate Finn when he gets the opportunity? Uh, when he gets the opportunity, and then Finn will beat Bobby through brains and technique. We'll just have to wait and see. Right now, it, it's very much a very slow start feud, but you know where it's going to lead. Hopefully, Finn will come out on top because. To be honest, Bobby, Lee, Bobby Lashley needed the heel turn, but I don't see it being. I can't. I can't. I don't want to see Finn get buried in the process, which will most likely happen. So I'm going to give this a six out of ten. Next up, we had Ruby Riot versus Sasha Banks in Riot Squad. We had the Riot Squad in Ruby Riot's side, obviously, and we had Natalia and Bailey in Sasha's side. Makes sense, baby faces versus here. This is pretty much building up for their six woman tag team match, which is going to happen at Evolution pay per view, which just honestly doesn't feel like it's been built up great. The women's pay per view, I honestly feel sorry for. Um, but this was a decent match. Both women have definitely have chemistry, um, and the right decision was made. The right Ruby Riot got a big victory. I will say a big victory over returning Sasha Banks, which I wasn't expecting. 
but it just it, you know what's going to happen. The pay per view match is the most important match, and you know that the babyface team is most likely going to beat the riots. A uh, bit of a shame because I think the riots could be they have become a better and better faction on Raw. It's just they need to be books stronger and I think a victory last night was a good starting point and how let's be honest we would hope that they would get a victory again at Evolution but it's not going to happen we know how WWE creative go and it's just going to be one of those uh, yeah we lo we won the go home show match but it's going to be we're going to lose the main pay-per-view match so I'm going to give this a uh, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 next up we got D Generation X and the Brothers of Destruction at it again. When I say at it again, I mean literally it, it was a poor promo. Uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H, they don't, and Undertaker and Kane don't need to do this kind of thing. It was crap now. It was crap 10 years ago when they these guys were in their prime. Now it's just, it's like, oh god guys, we don't need it now. Why are we having it now when you know it's crap 10 years ago? Um, it just felt bland, and that is the worst thing. DX is kind of hint at NXT, which was great. Got the proud chat for NXT, but apart from that, it really wasn't anything to talk about. Um, for me, I I just want this match to get over and done with. I do enjoy DX being back together, but I just, to be honest, it's just a nostalgia. And they talked about nostalgia in the promo. So let's be honest, it's. <sighs> Do we really need these type of promos? Do we? I'm, I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 10. Next up we got a really good promo though. Paul Heyman came out and cut a fantastic promo. Um, talked about Roman Reigns and then he talked about Braun Strowman winning the Universal title. Yes, that's right. Um, Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar. Sorry, did I say Braun Strowman winning the Universal title? I meant Brock Lesnar winning the Universal title. Um, but yeah. Crown Jewel, we will have Braun versus Brock for the vacant Universal title. Um, like I said, Paul Heyman called a fantastic promo. Talks about Brock winning it, taking it to UFC, showing the whole world what WWE is about. Braun Strowman interrupted him, told him, I'm going to take this title. And when Roman's better, when he's back, he's going to get a shot straight away. I thought this automatically put Braun into the babyface category. So Braun's pretty much been turned in one promo back to being a babyface. Makes sense, he's over as hell. Um, it just it just makes sense right now. And let's be honest, I actually enjoy a babyface Braun Strowman more than a heel because they're literally exactly the same. It's just, I think there's a lot less spit when he's babyface, but that might just be me. But yeah, Braun Strowman. I mean, next thing we know, Drew McIntyre, Claymore's, Braun Strowman in the face. Really good promo. It definitely builds up the feud between Braun and Drew McIntyre for the future. Hopefully Braun will win the Universal title and Drew McIntyre becomes number one contender because these two could really have a great matches. So for me, this is getting a solid 8 out of 10. Next thing I'm going to talk about is like a two-parter. So first things first, we had Elias about to play. Uh, he was interrupted by Apollo. Apollo and him have a quick match, a very, very quick match, where Elias kind of quickly squashes um, Apollo, so pretty much means that feud I was kind of hoping for for Elias versus Apollo isn't going to happen. Bit of a shame, but with everything going on on Raw right now, it makes sense where they need to swap things around. And after the advert, we had Elias back out. And Elias pretty much tried to play his music again. He was interrupted this time by the acting general manager, Bron uh, Baron Corbin. Baron's like, look, Elias, we just don't have time for you tonight. I have a contract signing. I just don't have the time. So you're going to have to go backstage. And Elias just went, no, no, not having this anymore. I'm sick and tired of people interrupting me. I'm sick and tired of it. all this. I'm going to play. Now shut your mouth, turn off your cell phone, and enjoy my music. And Bron uh, Baron Corbin just went, if Stephanie McMahon didn't like you so much, you'd be fired right now. And don't forget who paid, who you work for. Lies goes back step, goes back round, goes to back round, comes back out with his guitar, smashes it pa behind Baron Corbin's back. The guitar explodes. It's awesome. Um, this pretty much turned Elias' baby face. Brilliant. It makes sense. They need to swap things round. Elias is a another 
automatic guy who's so over as a heel, it's about time he did turn into the babyface kind of character. I hope they keep him as that kind of sassy heel, well, sassy babyface kind of character because I think that will work better for him. But yeah, the crowd started cheering, automatic click babyface turn, makes sense. Baron Corp, it look it's going to look like we're going to have some big names and I'll talk about that at the end of the show but really good segment. The match itself will probably get a 4 out of 10 but the segment between Braun, uh, Baron Corbin and Elias is going to get a solid 7 out of 10. So we had another promo this time it was the Bella Twins and Ronda Rousey and this was a really really good heel promo by the Bella Twins. Remember last week we had probably for me uh, Ronda Rousey's best promo uh, hit at the Bella Twins, this time round it was the Bella's turn and I think they really knocked it out of the park. Okay, they use exactly the same kind of relationship but this time instead of talking about men Ronda was with, because I don't think that really matters, they talked about Ronda promising her mother all these times like I would be undefeated at UFC, I would win the Olympics and all this lot and pretty much saying you've been a failure your whole career, why stop now? And that's pretty cool, Ronda did promise she wouldn't attack the Bellas, Nikki Bella got a good slap in. It's just, the thing is, the Bellas were written like the Mean Girls villains. And that's what they are, they are legitimately just Mean Girls versus Ronda Rousey, the babyface girl. So, the way they carry, let's be honest, it's already a lacklustre rivalry going into Evolution and that's WWE creative right there at its worst. They just don't know how to book women's wrestling right now in WWE, and that's a shame. I think the only one, only feud which everyone's looking forward to is Becky and Charlotte, and that's because they're the only ones who've actually had time to develop a feud to Evolution, while everyone else has kind of been trying to do catch up to them. So for me, I've got to give this. It's going to get a seven out of ten because it was a good promo, but it's it's a shame that we already know this pay per view is going to really struggle with how it's been booked. Uh, next up, we had a Fatal 4-Way match where we saw um, Nick, uh, Nia Jax versus Ember Moon versus Tamina versus Dana Brooke. This, for me, was a waste of time, mainly because it did nothing for any of the four women in the match. Uh, it ended with uh, Ember Moon winning with the Eclipse after Tamina and Nia Jax pretty much tried to destroy each other. That's kind of a feud we're hoping to see in the future. But again, like I've already stated, the women's pay-per-view and everything including inside of it has been booked absolutely terrible. So this is no exception. This was just felt absolutely boring. It was like, well, no one's come out really looking strong. And maybe Ember's looked the strongest so far, but that's about it. It's not... What, what, what are we supposed to do with this? It's just a shame. It, it just felt like there was no need for this match. It's just trying to build up something for the pay-per-view. Yet, it's just too little, too late. I really am feeling sorry for the women in WWE right now. Like I keep saying, it's going to get a 4 out of 10. Sorry, I'm sorry to say that. Next up, we had an absolutely epic main event. We had... The Shield versus Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre for the Raw Tag Team Championships. This was brilliant. WWE Creative at its best. Where the women's they've struggled, the men they just really knew what to do tonight. Uh, and that's what they did. They really, really put everything together last night. Um, first things first, what a match. These four men showing exactly why the the you know work workers of Raw, they they put on absolutely epic match. So it it's one of those matches where you're like, ah, we've seen this so many times. Then you go, well, we haven't seen it this way before. That's how good it is. And it's and it makes it more entertaining. It's different. Yes, it, it's the same four characters, but it's this it's it's a different way of telling the story. And it really worked for me. I really enjoyed that. Um, and the way. WWE built it, it was so close, like those heels did absolutely everything possible to hold on to the tag team championships and you know Dolph and Drew just worked so well together. Now if this is the end of their partnership, that's fine, I hope Dolph really, you know, doesn't just sink, I hope he stays up into the main events kind of stuff because he's, he's earned it, he really has. And Drew McIntyre is for me one of the best the company has. But my God, 
just the, the this is this is like a cliff this is like a quick note of what happened referee gets knocked out by Seth Braun Strowman's music hits Braun comes out Braun and Drew McIntyre start fighting each other in the ring in the crowd back go to backstage Dolph wakes up sees that Drew's gone gets the Raw Tag Team Championship belt about to hit Seth with it Dean drags it off him Seth stomps him Dean gets the referee drags him into the ring one two three we have new Raw Tag Team Champions feel good moment we're excited we're happy oh brilliant this is for Roman Ex exactly what we want to see next thing we know Dirty Deeds in the ring that's right Dean Ambrose turned heel that's not just all. He starts beating the crap out of Seth. Drags him out to the ring. Starts beating him up some more. Pulls up the, you know, padding around the ring. Dirty Deeds into the cement next to the ring. Takes off his shield gear. Walks up to the walls of the crowd. Brilliant. This is fantastic. I swear I was not expecting. I did not expect the, that night of all nights for... Dean to turn I thought they'd leave it another week maybe do it then but new Raw Tag Team Champions have just imploded on themselves after winning the titles now Dean kept on saying repeat what you said so Seth must have said something I'm guessing it must have been lunatic time or something he must have said something like lunatic or something like that to just make Dean just cross over to the dark side but this is smart this is really smart now we have Braun Elias and Seth who are definitely going to be the big baby faces on the company I mean you got Dean, Drew and Dolph who are definitely going to be the big heels on Raw this is brilliant I think this is really smart creative right now it, you've lost a major player with Roman Reigns but you've really shuffled everything around where it's exciting and different and I can't wait to see how this all goes um, this was a great match really great ending to the show I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. And there you go, guys. That was Raw for this week. What did I think? I thought it was... A, with everything which went on with Roman and, you know, the way they had to shuffle everything around, I think Raw really put together a good show. I think it was well put together. Unfortunately, everything which involved the women for Evolution just felt out of place. And that's a shame. But everything else, just for me, just felt right. You know, Elias turning was the right time. Braun turning back to face, right time. Dean turning heel, definitely the right time. Um, but yeah, what what was your, what was your, the part of the show you enjoyed the most? Um, leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you do like our videos, please like, subscribe, press the bell to keep notified. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do it at Smart Talk YouTube. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do it at Boise88. And just one last time, we're just here at Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews. We just want to say, get well soon, Roman. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with you as well. And thank you. And that's it, guys. I'll see you next time.